Okay, so there's something that's confusing me, and it's amongst all of this conference realignment talk, and it's a never-ending conversation, really, because the landscape of college football is forever changing and constantly moving. But there are a lot of West Virginia Mountaineer fans and supporters that want WVU in the SEC. And honestly, there are people even beyond that because the conversation of the future of West Virginia and the Mountaineers program extends well beyond the WVU community and those who follow and cover and care about the program's future really at all. It's a conversation nationally because they're kind of this enigma in a way, and many feel like they've been in the wrong conference after the last big boom of conference realignment. But so many people out there want WVU in the SEC, and these are people that want the best for the program. I don't get it. I'm Mike Osti, and I'm here to touch on why West Virginia in the SEC, and of course, this is a hypothetical, as I'm talking about it right now, but again, we never know with the ever-changing college football world. Why WV in the SEC just is not best for the program, is not what you should be rooting for, is not what you should want if you actually want the best for the program. So obviously many may feel that WV has been in the wrong conference the last 10 plus years. Okay, so back a decade plus ago when this all got shook up and spit out, basically, and it was that boom of conference. You know, I mean, of course, teams have moved conferences prior to that, but that was the real seismic shift where a lot of teams moved, conferences really changed, dynamics and, and old school rivalries, the backyard brawl, things like that had to go by the wayside for money and kind of eventually get us to where we are. I don't know what they were thinking of then, if they thought we would get here at this point, but hey. Who knows where we'll be 10, 20 years from now. But West Virginia at that time, of course, they were in what was then the Big East. And yeah, the Big East was a gauntlet in basketball. And winning the Big East in basketball was incredibly impressive. And West Virginia had been a team that could contend there. Of course, winning a Big East title, going to a Final Four, and all of that right around that time. But all of this is about football. All of this is about football. And West Virginia, of course, also coming off of a really elite glory period for the program. And you absolutely could argue, and this is the, you know, a program that's right up there. This is the 14th, 15th winningest program of all time. Definitely top 15 winningest program of all time. That that was the best period in the history of the program from Pat White stepping foot on campus till really the end of the Big East. That was it. And multiple coaches, multiple players. It does include, the 70 point whooping of Clemson there to kind of to cap it off in the orange bowl. That kind of felt like the end and that period there, that was the glory for West Virginia. It's not been like that since of course. And geographically the big 12 has sucked for West Virginia travel. It has sucked for West Virginia going back to basketball. Bob Huggins complains about it all the time. Can't imagine what he would think if things are shaken up again and you get a lot of Pac 12 teams that are much further away. Cause that's been in rumors. But again, going back to football, it was going to be tougher, obviously. Texas and Oklahoma, they're elite powerhouse programs historically and at that time currently in college football. Now, you can say we want about Texas really not being back and not playing to that, that level in Oklahoma. They've been a playoff contender every year, but maybe some think they've been overrated. But regardless, recruiting-wise, history-wise, program-wise, money-wise, network-wise, cachet, what they bring – let's be real here, above West Virginia. And that wasn't the case in the old Big East. At that point, you could argue West Virginia was the class of the conference, certainly off that off that chunk of time. So people never really, – and you lose the backyard brawl, you lose natural rivals, and then also you have a myriad of those rivals go together eventually, and this isn't all at once, to the ACC, where you're getting your main rivals from that old Big East days Pitt, Syracuse, Louisville, teams like that, even Boston College, just teams that you think Big East. 
in the ACC. Eventually all there together. And it feels like almost West Virginia got left behind. That despite performing better on the field, they got left behind. And they got left behind for an obvious reason. Yeah, some can point to academics. And the ACC absolutely cares about that. And let's be real here again. West Virginia overall as an athletic program deserves it. But as an academic institution, it would be below Pitt and many of those schools I mentioned. And certainly the thoroughbreds of Duke, North Carolina, etc. Entrenched in the fabric of the ACC. Let's just be real. That's just the case. Virginia... I mean, Duke, borderline Ivy League. So I get it. And there's a whole show we could have that's another day about how, you know, how that is the case and why that is the case. And maybe if that should be changed, because unlike a lot of other states, if you are from West Virginia, Promise Scholarship exists and they really want everybody there. They want to give them an opportunity to go to the school, but grade wise, et cetera they wouldn't even get into those other schools. So they at least get an opportunity to be at West Virginia and then they may mess up. They may fail out. It may linger them out. That will hurt the overall numbers. Even if they don't get into the actual colleges, like say journalism school, you have to get into school and get into the, the J school. But overall you're still there and it shows the numbers. Well, this kid went there and he failed to get into the J school or failed to get in here or failed out of school or whatever. So that hurts the overall numbers. So maybe if you really want to compete academically, you don't just let everybody in. West Virginia is much easier to get into in general, even if it's harder to get into certain schools. And I'm not going to you know, knock my degree here. But that's just the case in terms of easier to get into the actual school than those schools. And that's about the Promise Scholarship. That's about wanting the kids from the state to be able to have a chance. But if you tighten that up, your certain academic numbers would look better. But we'll leave that be. But also the other end of it, and I've touched on this in the past too, and this is out there. It's obvious. It was said at the time. Media market-wise. Look at myself. I work in Pittsburgh media, okay? I've covered the Steelers, etc. That's what we do here as part of the Sports Now family. It started off as a Pittsburgh outlet. That's no secret. And we have a lot of Pittsburgh coverage, including covering West Virginia, which is a part of the Pittsburgh DMA. So meaning part of that media market, if you live in Morgantown, you're getting Pirate games, you're getting Penguin games, you're getting the Steelers. You don't have those pro teams in your actual city or in your actual state. It's just about the college it's similar to say what oklahoma would have been prior to the oklahoma city thunder or kind of really is you know kind of like iowa those, those type of places it's a college state really the college program the athletic program of west virginia university that's the state but yeah there are pro teams near and they're in the media market morgantown where the w campus is is in the pittsburgh media market in a way. So you have other outlets, our competitors in Pittsburgh media are also covering West Virginia. Maybe not as much as Pitt, but it's covering West Virginia, also covering Penn State. It's about a region, where the kids are going to go to school, where the parents, where the fans may care about, what's in the TV market. And that's, again, I can go on and on about that. But that's all part of it. And why would you want to bring the same? So you already have Pitt. You prefer the academics. Maybe even you prefer some history, even though it had certainly been a long time until Pitt was back to glory. And last year, with that special season for Pitt, but it took a while in the ACC to get there. So you have Pitt, you want Pitt, Pitt's a fit for you. Again, the others too, and you, we can argue about Louisville because academics, et cetera, I think that's that's more of a debate than say Pitt. Pitt certainly has a better academic situation than WVU. But you take Pitt, you're getting you know the same media members. You're getting myself credentialed and again and going to cover both. You're getting the same media market, the same potential eyeballs, etc. Cable deal wouldn't benefit having West Virginia. Now, and I've touched on this as well. Now you get here and it's a little different. Okay, now that's gone. You're getting into 2022 where it's about streaming. It's about overall interest. It's about who would pay for what subscription. It's not really about cable at all anymore. Media market doesn't matter as much. It's who's going to watch where the money can come from and the interest from the fans and then program etc all that can bring academics might not even matter as much but that was the issue they were left behind before and i get you lose those rivals i get you feel like maybe it's a disadvantage for west virginia maybe you feel like they're at disadvantage recruiting wise they're at disadvantage of different things so even the success they've had and certainly have not had at times the last 10 plus years in the big 12 and exactly 10 at this point that okay maybe it's a disadvantage by being in the conference but instead of wanting West Virginia to be a part of the ACC, and I'm not, again, saying they're going to be, but that would be, I would say, and I've touched on this before, the best case scenario, you get the rivalries back 
you get a better situation. And yeah, if Clemson leaves and the whole conference is gone, I could get stability if it's just going to be, if you believe in your mind, the future of college football is just the Big Ten and the SEC. It's just two superpower conferences. Okay, then fine. Maybe they fit more in the SEC than Big Ten because they're just not going to be invited to the Big Ten. I, I can I can get that. But even if you believe there's going to be three superpower conferences in the future, even if you say, okay, there's going to be three, forget what they're called. Maybe they're in SEC, Big Ten, even though, of course, the names make no sense, certainly the Big Ten, when you got more than 10 teams <laughs> or not as many number teams as you're going to have with certain other conferences, potentially. Maybe even the Big 12 would have certainly more than 12 teams. But say the big, you believe the Big 12 is going to be gone, the Pac-12 is going to be gone, and Big Ten and SEC are stable, so you want stability. Okay, I hear it. But if you believe there's going to be three, then you should want WVU in the third one. Okay. And honestly, in terms of what you want and what's best, if I had to rank it, I might even say going to the ACC, if it stays around and it's not going to die at any point in the immediate future here because of TV deals, et cetera, unless we hear tomorrow that Clemson is leaving. And even then, so you should want WVU in the, the ACC. It will fit. It'll be better geographically. You'll get those rivals back. You get big games back, and West Virginia, and here's the kicker, can compete. They can certainly compete in football. I'm not saying they're going to win the, the freaking thing. I'm not saying they're going to be Clemson going any dynasty. They may never do what they did with Rich Rod ever again, and that was, again, it was old Big East. It was tough in basketball, maybe tough in football, but not nearly as tough as some other conferences. If they're the SEC then, they wouldn't have done it then, and that goes to what I'm saying here. You want to you want to have a stabil, stable situation. You want to have stability. You do. You want to have stability for the program. You don't want every time there's conference realignment to have nationally people saying what's going to happen with WVU. Understanding the history, respecting it, but feeling like it's kind of an enigma, what's going to happen with WVU. It's a national conversation more than for fans and media. You don't want that for your program. West Virginia does, even rivals tell me this all the time, West Virginia deserves to have some stability and be, be have a seat at the table. You, no one wants to get even pit fans from the brawl. They don't want to get rid of West Virginia. They want West Virginia to at least be a viable contending entity and have the brawl, et cetera. They're not looking to end the program or have it go be, you know, into mediocrity or into obscurity. They don't, no one wants that really. So, okay. I, I can hear stability, but you should want stability and you should want your team to be somewhat of a contender for crying out loud. You don't want your team to just be an afterthought and your team to have one every 20 years having a chance and just be dead in the water. And yeah, in the Big Ten, it would probably be similar, but the SEC would be a gauntlet and then some. Nobody wants them in the Big Ten, really. But you're talking about the SEC. People want them in the SEC. Again, the ACC, you can at least have stability, have money, have at least a couple of elite programs with some history there that are allowed respectability like you have with Oklahoma and Texas right now as we currently stand. You can beat Pitt occasionally, even if you're not better than them right now. You certainly can contend in the brawl. People think they might even beat them this year when Pitt's coming off their best season in 50 years. They're not the favorite. I'm not saying they may. I'm not saying they will. They may, I guess. But you're going to be right there with Pitt in the future. You could build it up to be that. You could be right there with other programs in the future for sure. Basketball-wise, you know, obviously Duke and North Carolina being there will make it brutal. And, yeah, maybe you're better in terms of your number two or three in the, in the Big 12 in basketball, you got Kansas there, but otherwise you certainly can compete and maybe actually win the thing if you get solid players and you build yourself up and you become what you were a few years ago. Okay, but again, this is all about football. It's all about football. So like for Pitt, it, it's gonna be, it would be brutal in the ACC and it might be a little easier in the SEC than it would be in the ACC in terms of competing in basketball because you have some basketball programs, certainly Kentucky, Florida, but Kentucky's been down at times. Florida been de- Florida's been down at times. West Virginia could compete basketball-wise. Maybe more overall in sports, too. I can get that. But this is all about football. And if you're sucking it up in football, if you're not bringing anything to the table in football, you're going to eventually be left behind. This is all about how programs feel they can sell themselves football-wise and how conferences feel they are attractive or not football wise this is about football so telling me about other sports i get it it doesn't matter this is all about football and on the football field the sec i don't have to tell you this it's obvious it's a gauntlet the reason why i defend alabama for scheduling mercer every other year because they have six or seven ranked opponents in the conference Usually five of them are in the top 10, if not top five. They certainly have at least three in the top five, usually. 
That's why if they go run through a whole schedule and go undefeated but lose the conference title game, they're still a playoff team. They so deserve to because they're losing to the number one or two team in the country, and that's their only loss of the year, for example. That's a gauntlet. It's murder's row. You had a team go undefeated in that conference 15-plus years ago and not even get a chance at a national title because that conference is so freaking brutal. The SEC is brutal. It is. It is. Look at the national championships. Maybe some feel it's not what it used to be in terms of being how brutal uh, it is, but – it's still, it's very, very hard. It's certainly harder than what West Virginia has ever dealt with in their history, certainly immediately right now. So maybe you also could talk about if the Big 12 is going to stay around in the new Big 12 with USC, with UCF and Cincinnati, et cetera, and Houston, BYU. Okay, it's not elite. Yeah, that may be down a little bit. Maybe you do want better for the program than that. Maybe that's not feeling stable, but maybe you have a better chance of being the power there if you ever voted up to that again, maybe behind Oklahoma State. That could be a benefit, but I get being concerned about that and not wanting that because that's not stable and that may not exist in the future. Okay, Pac-12 makes no freaking sense. Bob Huggins will go nuts. That's not going to happen. Big Ten won't invite them. I get it. So you're left really saying to yourself, do you want to stay in this new Big 12? And I get you'll win more, likely. You have a better chance of being a regional power there. But what does that really mean? Is it going to be considered a major conference and it may not be stable? So, okay, say remove that from the equation. You're talking ACC or SEC. They both are going to bring you more stability than this, as we're currently speaking. They both can bring you money, maybe more than this, as we're currently speaking. The ACC brings you those natural rivals back, brings you interest and fun games back, will give you a chance to play some good teams that can help you in your wins. Your schedule won't be bad. It'll be certainly decent. If Pitt last year off their special year, they won the ACC. Yeah, divisions are going to go by, by the wayside. That's good. That means the two best teams will play for a title like in the Big 12. That's more fair. That's how it always should be in every conference, regardless of all of this. But Pitt lost to freaking Western Michigan. You take that Western Michigan loss, 50 to 49, all the points the Penny Pickett threw up, et cetera, you take that out, then they probably were a playoff team last year with what they did, and that's even a down ACC. They certainly were a contender for it even with that bad loss in there. So if West Virginia could put that type of year up and don't have the Western Michigan loss as horrendous as it is, they could be right there. And that's playing in that same conference. That, that's playing in the ACC. The network, the ACC network, et cetera, more stable than this in the Big 12 or the new Big 12. And it compares to the SEC by the fact that you can have, yes, SEC will be even, even more stable. The money will maybe be more plentiful. But do you want to be Missouri where once every 15 years you can maybe do something? Do you want to be a bottom feeder? Do you want to be looking at Alabama and those programs? There's there's zero percent chance you're winning that conference. At least the ACC, maybe there's a ten or twenty or something like that. The SEC, recruiting wise, you can dip in there with where you are now. But to go conference to conference and you're in the conference competing, God, that sounds like doomsday. So why people want West Virginia in the SEC that actually want the program to do well, that doesn't make sense to me. It really, really does not. Feel free to comment below and come back at me. I'll certainly come back at you. We can talk about this, like, hopefully, intelligently, because I know this riles up the engines in terms of conference realignment. And if everything else is sinking and there's no other option, okay, you pick it over the Big Ten if there's only two superpowers. But if there's going to be three, you want to be in the third one. I could see not wanting the current Big 12, new Big 12 situation because of lack of stability. I see stability in the SEC, but I see no competitiveness. And I'm not trying to be a defeatist. And, and say that, that, you know, just I'm trying to keep it honest. I'm trying to keep it real. That's what I always do. So like it or not, that's what I'm always going to be. And West Virginia and the SEC, while it could be stable and there could be money there, and maybe, yeah, it'll help recruiting. You could do what Texas A&M did. But Texas A&M got Johnny Menzel, a Heisen winner at one point. That's how they built it up to an elite year and in increased recruiting. Are you expecting West Virginia to do that? They've had good recruiting years. They're actually having a solid one for 2023 in that class. You bring in JT Daniels, et cetera, but he's been hurt. That's why he comes over. It's not like you're going to get Menzel, or at least you don't figure to. You can't bank on it, and you can't give me easier division where they will be placed in because, first of all, you can bank nothing on geography. Geography obviously doesn't matter these days in college football. USC and UCLA are going to be in the Big Ten. Look at that geography. Look at that travel. It doesn't matter. Geography guarantees nothing for you, and divisions may go away anyway. So say geography doesn't matter and divisions go away and you're in the SEC and you got stability, you're not going to have the conference fold, you got more money, you do a little better job recruiting, but so does everyone else around you. And now you're still behind the apple cart. You're still behind all of them. You're, you're, you're still seventh in the conference and that's at best. And 
yeah, they might expand the playoff maybe to eight teams and have the conference champs and a couple wild cards get in. That's probably what it should be. But are they going to expand it to 16, to 24, 32, to what the NCAA tournament is in basketball? That I doubt. That I very, very, very much doubt. So unless that happens, you're really in trouble. And while the SEC could provide you stability, you want to have a situation where you have stability and you can be competitive. That's not in the SEC. You can't be competitive enough in the SEC. You can't be a true contender there. That's sinking the ship before it even sets to freaking sail. And that's just keeping it real. That's not being negative. ACC is more of the ticket. I've done shows on that. I'm not going to touch on that any further here. But all these West Virginia fans that want West Virginia in the SEC, I don't get it. I don't get it. Try to convince me. I, I can't see that, that, that being done, though, because I don't get it. I can't keep it real and see how West Virginia can contend really ever in the SEC, even if there's a small percent chance in any other conference. That'll do it for this edition of the show. I'm Mike Osti. Of course, follow us at WV Sports Now. Find us, West Virginia Sports Now, all over the circuit, as we, of course, are your outlet for comprehensive coverage of the West Virginia Mountaineers, the whole West Virginia athletic scene, and beyond here, part of the Sports Now family. Of course, find me on Twitter at Mike Osti 11 And... I just had to drop the mic on all of those West Virginia fans that want West Virginia in the SEC. I just don't get it.